guys, it's Cher from Woodshop Diaries, and today I want to show you how I built this mobile barbecue cart slash prep table slash serving table slash garden cart slash whatever you could use a big sturdy cart on wheels for. This is a super easy build that you can definitely complete in a weekend, so if you're ready to get building, let's go. After I created our garden patio a few weeks ago and mentioned adding things to it throughout the year, I got several requests for a barbecue station and a prep table. Now we don't do a lot of grilling and I really didn't want anything where the grill was built into the project. So I kept this cart kind of basic so that it can stay pretty versatile. You can set a small grill on top, use it as a prep station next to your existing grill, use it as a bar cart, a serving table, or even just roll it around the yard to collect your vegetable harvest if you have a large garden. I'm planning on creating a floating deck or a paver patio later this summer, so the wheels will be great for that, but they don't really work great on the gravel driveway that I use to take pictures here. So just use your imagination. I've partnered with my friends at the Home Depot to bring you this project as part of the Prospective Tool Review Program. I'll be using the new Ryobi HP cordless jigsaw in this build, so keep an eye out for that. I've got the full plans and all the details on this build linked in the description below, and if you're ready to see it come together, let's get building. To keep costs low and assembly easy, I just used some basic construction lumber here. Some 2x6s, 2x4s, 1x6s, and a couple of furring strips. This will be an outside project, so you could definitely use treated, redwood, or cedar wood here for this build, but I plan to keep this under cover and it'll last several years like this, especially if I apply an outdoor sealant. So the first thing I did was start cutting down my frame pieces. Now I get a lot of comments from people that if they had a shop full of tools, they could build this or that too. And while certain tools do make the job easier, I started out several years ago with just a hammer and a jigsaw. And I was always surprised at what you could build with just those two tools if you got creative. That said, this project could easily be completed with just a drill and a jigsaw if that's all you had. A miter saw would make the straight cuts a little quicker, but any saw really will work for the straight cuts. I built this project in basically three sections, two leg sub-assemblies, a bottom tray, and a top frame. Once I had cut all the pieces to assemble these sections, I first cut the curve out on the pieces that will come out to add the handle of the cart. I felt like the story of the three little bears trying to trace this curve. I tried a paint can to trace the curve, but it was too small. So I grabbed a five gallon bucket and tried the top to trace the curve and it was too big. So I flipped the bucket over and traced the bottom and it was just right. So once I was satisfied with the um, size and shape of the curve here, I just used the jigsaw to cut out this curve. Now take note that this is the new Ryobi HP jigsaw. I've been really impressed with the power of the Ryobi HP line of tools and I'm really glad to add this cordless jigsaw to the shop. It's got your typical variable speed control, but this one actually has a trigger lock that will give you more control on detailed cuts and it runs on Ryobi's existing 18 volt battery platform. You can check out more details on the saw in the description below. Once these curved details were cut, I gave everything a good sanding. And again, if you don't have a sander, hand sanding is totally fine here. Since this is really just an outside project, the main goal is just to avoid splinters. It doesn't have to be perfect. Then it was time to assemble. I used two and a half inch exterior screws to assemble two leg assemblies. These leg assemblies were basically just a bottom 2x4 brace attached between two 2x4 legs. Then I used 2.5 inch exterior screws to assemble a 2x4 tray that would fit into the leg assemblies. And lastly, I assembled a 2x6 top frame. Now you could use more two and a half inch wood screws for this, but because these screws will be seen, I opted for a more decorative option and I used these two and seven eighths inch timber screws. Structurally, they're a little overkill, but I like the black hardware accents here, so I use them for this top frame. Throughout all the assembly process, I used a speed square to help me keep my pieces square while assembling. And again, if you want all of the measurements and detailed plans for this build, you can find them at the link in the description. Once the legs, the bottom tray, and the top frame sub-assemblies were together, it was time to start assembling the cart as a whole. 
I flipped the top frame upside down and used some scrap blocks to screw the leg assemblies inside the frame so that they were 3 quarter inch down from the top edge. Again, I used timber screws for this just for a little more visual interest. Once the legs were in place, I flipped the cart right side up and installed the bottom tray between the legs. It was a tight fit, so I used a rubber mallet to tap it into place. Before attaching anything, I made sure that the legs were square to the top and then I screwed in the tray using more timber screws. I wanted the slats for the top and bottom to simply sit in place so that they could be removed later if I decided to replace them with something like concrete or some kind of a tile. So I cut furring strips to screw between the legs 3 quarter inches down from the top edge so that the slats could just rest on top of them. I also added these along the bottom edge of the bottom tray. For the handle, I measured and cut a poplar dowel to fit between the ends of the top frame where the curve was. I used a one and a quarter inch wood dowel for this, so do keep in mind that when cutting your curves in the top frame that you need to leave enough room for whatever size dowel that you add between the top edge and the curve. Now the frame was complete and it was time to add the wheels. I will link the exact casters that I used here in the description, but I got two casters that swivel and lock for the front and two fixed casters for the back. I used some wood screws with washers to install these into the bottom braces of the leg assemblies. The plate on the fixed casters was a little bigger than the 2x4 here, so I had to drive these screws in at a slight angle, but it worked fine. I flipped the cart over and all that was left was adding the slats. I cut 1x6 slats for the top and bottom trays and simply set them in place. You could definitely screw these into the furring strips if you wanted, just be sure to leave gaps between the bores for water to drain out if it will be out in the weather. Now I actually bought a deck stain and sealant to use on this piece for finish, but it was way more orange than I had expected when I applied it, so I decided to just give this a few coats of clear outdoor poly. You can use whatever outdoor sealer you prefer, but if you plan to keep it out in the elements, paint would probably be the most durable option. I plan to keep this under cover for the most part, so it should last a good while as is. I added a couple of hooks for cooking utensils and got it set up and ready to grill. This was a super simple project, but it was really fun to put together. We will definitely be using this outside this year for both cooking and entertaining. If you need some extra work or serving space for your patio, porch, garden, or grill, this is a really basic and inexpensive project that you can easily throw together in a weekend. And don't forget, I've got the full plans linked below if you're ready to get building. I really hope you enjoyed this project, and if you'd like to see more of the projects that I'll be making for our outdoor space this summer, be sure to subscribe to my channel and follow along. Thanks so much for watching, friends, and until next time, happy building!